Let me know if this ever happens to you. You're doing a color grade on a sequence and you get to that point where you're essentially done, but something just doesn't quite feel finished about it. It doesn't have that pop that you really want it to and you don't know what to do to take it to that next level. Well, you're gonna wanna stick around because I'm gonna show you a super simple tool in DaVinci Resolve that I've been using a lot lately and it's gonna help you immensely with hyping up your boring shots, especially if you're grading natural light footage. So, secure the cup and let's get into it. Okay, so this is what we're working with. It's part of a project that I just finished shooting. Now, because this video isn't necessarily supposed to be a start to finish color grade, I'll give you a quick overview on what I've done already. So the first thing that I did, because all of this was shot at the same time, I grabbed all of them by hitting Command A. I right click on any of them and I put Add into New Group. So now that they're all in a single group, I can go up to the top here where it says Clip. I can go Group Post Clip and then anything that I put in here, it's going to apply to all of them. If you want to figure out a little bit more about how to do that, I have another video on using that feature. I'll put it up here somewhere. So this is what the footage looked like before. As you can see, I've got five nodes in my group post clip group. This third one is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. This is our color space transform. So I'm converting from S-Log3 from the Sony camera into Rec. 709, kind of. I'm actually converting into Cineon Film Log because the LUT that I'm using just after the color space transform, which is one of the built in looks. So if you go to LUTs and film looks here, it is this one here, the 23 383 D55. It's looking for a Cineon film log, so I actually converted it to that and it does the rest of the work. So if we put those two in together, you see that's doing a lot of the look conversion. Then these two nodes before that are just to kind of dial that in. So in this first node, I've got some color changes. If we look at our color warper here, I've just moved a little bit of the oranges and yellows around to where I like them. And then in my lift gamma and gain, I've just pushed this gamma up a little bit into the more warmer area. And I've pulled my lift down into the kind of tealy blue area. So that's before that one and after that one. In this second node here, I noticed that some of the shots we're getting a little bit too blue. It looks like I've pushed blue a little towards teal and then I've pulled out the saturation of the blue a little bit. And then after my color space transform and my film look, all I've got going on here is I've got some sharpening. So I'm pulling that a little bit sharper. And then I'm also using the low soft and high soft to kind of make it look even a little bit more faded in these black areas. So all together that's before and then after. And then if I go to clip up here, so instead of group post clip, I go to each individual clip. So this first node on every single clip is just fixing exposure, contrast, white balance, any kind of tonal looks that I want to have in that specific shot going into all of those final looks. So if we turn this node back on, you can see I wanted it to be a lot more dark. All I've done specifically here is I've pulled down the offset. So basically I just said I shot this too bright. I want it to come down a whole bunch. So I pulled down the offset a whole bunch and then we've got this kind of more moody foresty vibe. If we go to this first shot with the boot hitting the ground, we can see that I've actually pulled a little bit of the blue out of it. I fixed the white balance a little bit just using my lift, pushing that into the more warm area and it looks like I've pulled down the offset as well. So literally I would have just gone through every single one of these clips and fixed like that one had to come way down. That one was just a little cool and so on and so forth. So I'm just going through here every single time and I'm just kind of fixing anything that I think will make them look a little bit more even or a little bit more stylistic for that shot. And then the rest of the heavy lifting is being done in that group post clip where we've got our final look. So at this point, we can basically say that we're done. Things are looking pretty good, nice and balanced. But like we said before, it just feels like it's missing something. So what we're gonna do to make this grade look even better is shape the light around our subject. We're going to draw the eye of the viewer exactly where we want them to be looking and we're going to do that by using power windows. Before we dive deeper into power windows, we need to have a little talk. As a creative professional, I rely on my Mac and external drives to store and organize all of my digital files, including photos, videos, audio recordings, 
everything. But what happens when I accidentally delete a file or my hard drive crashes? That's where Disk Drill comes in. It's a powerful data recovery tool that can quickly and easily recover lost and deleted files from any storage device, including internal, external hard drives, USB sticks, SD cards, and more. Not only is Disk Drill easy to use, but it's also incredibly fast and efficient. It scans your storage devices to recover your files in no time, even if they've been deleted or lost due to formatting, corruption, or other issues. And with this video's sponsor, Setapp, you can use Disk Drill and over 240 other useful apps just by searching for anything you need. In short, if you're a photographer, videographer, or anyone who relies on their Mac for storing and managing digital files, Setapp and Disk Drill are a must have. Use the link down in the description for seven days free and then $9.99 per month for access to all the apps and see how they can save you time, hassle, and potentially even your valuable files. So now that we've got that basic grade across everything and it's looking pretty good, what I wanna do is show you that special sauce, those power windows and how they make such a huge difference. So taking this shot here, what we're gonna do is add another node by hitting option S and we're gonna add a power window on this node. And to do that, we go down here. This is our power window or our window tab. And then we've got all of these different types of power windows that we can use. So we've got square ones, we've got circular ones, we've got polygons, we've got ones that we can just draw curves and then we've got Got gradients. My favorite one and the one that I used all over this whole project was the circular one. So we're gonna place that circular one just by clicking on the circle and then we're gonna decide what the focus of our scene is. I'm gonna drag this out a little bit and obviously I think in this one we want people looking at my face. One thing that you can do to make this a little bit easier to see what you're doing is you can click this highlight button up here or hit shift H and then it's gonna show you what's happening in your power window. So as we move this around, we're seeing the part that we're actually going to be affecting. So far you can see we've placed a circle but we haven't done anything. That's because we're going to be making adjustments that are only going to affect the inside of that power window. And then we can use these little red guys on the outside here to feather that so that it's a softer, fall off from the inside to the outside. It'll look a little bit more natural that way. You might not actually notice that there's been an adjustment to the way that the light is naturally falling. Then if we hit shift H again, so we come out of that. Now at this point, we can kind of go one of two ways. If we found that my skin was too dark, we could go in on our offset and we could push that up. So we could brighten that up. In this specific case, I've actually already adjusted me and the way that I look, how I like it. So what I want to do is darken everything else to draw the viewer's eye to me. So what we're going to do is go down here beside the circle and there's this button so that we can invert what we're looking at. So if I click that, now if I hit Shift H again or click highlight, you'll see that now it's the opposite. So if I do that again, you'll see we're selecting inside the circle. Now we're selecting outside the circle. So anything that I do with the offset now is only affecting the areas outside the circle. And you can do whatever you want with this. So let's say we didn't just want to adjust the offset, which is essentially just your exposure level. We wanted to put some red into the gain. We wanted to put some green into the lift. We wanted to mess with the colors, but not touch anything inside the circle. We could totally do that. In this specific case, I just want to use the offset because it's going to give us the most natural feeling push down of the exposure on everything except for what's inside the circle. And if for some reason you're not actually seeing your power window on the screen, you might need to go down below the viewer here and click this so that you can get to the power window. If I want to turn that off so that we can just see the scene and let's see what a big difference that made. So before it's kind of confusing. You can see that there's all sorts of shapes and brightness going on and our eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part. But when I turn that on, now my eye is naturally drawn into this face. Now you and I can see that I've obviously added some manipulation to this scene. I've added a big vignette around the subject. The average viewer who is not watching this with before and afters will have no idea. They'll just think that's the way that it was shot. Let's grab another shot here because there's some more things that we can do with this. So with this one, you can see that I'm in the middle of this bridge here, but there's a lot going on. We've got a lot of foreground. There's a lot of detail up here, and I really want to try and draw the viewer's eye into the center. So we're going to make another node. And then what I could do is grab myself a power window. There we go. Maybe zoom in a little bit. Place the power window around me boost me up a little bit. 
big feather. You can also use the controls down here to move and feather it out. So we can use the size down here if we want to. We can rotate it and we can soften it out that way. Hitting Z or Z to zoom back out to full size. And then one of the cool things that we can do with power windows if we really want to is we can go over to the tracker tab. And as long as you're selected over here on the window, we can hit track forward and it's going to track that window forward. So hopefully it should see me and follow me along. So it was pretty quick. Did an okay job, it followed me and then it kind of tilted and then it expanded a little bit. So not quite what we're looking for in this specific case. And I think that doing it just around me in this specific case is a bit too fine. It's not quite giving me what I want. So I'm actually gonna reset this node and instead we're gonna make another power window. I'm gonna stretch it out over top of the whole bridge here. Shift H so that I can see kind of what I'm affecting. Feather it out to the max and then we're gonna do the same same thing as last time, so I'm gonna invert the selection, so it's gonna be everything except the gray area in the middle. And then I'm going to pull down my offset, so it's gonna darken everything else down. And now that I'm seeing it, I actually think I want to brighten up this middle area. Now one cool thing that we can do, if we right click on the node that has the power window, we can add a node and click add outside. Now what that's gonna do is it's going to give us a node that uses the power window from the previous node but it's gonna be the inverted version of it. So you can see that it's connected this blue line with the dots, so instead of being everything outside of the circle, it's now everything inside the circle. And the cool thing about doing it this way, instead of just making two nodes and remaking that or copying the power window over, is that if I move the power window in the first node, let's say I just move this way up here, you see that it moved it in the second node as well, so they'll always be linked together. So what I'm gonna do in that second node in the outside node is I'm actually just gonna take my offset and brighten it up a little bit. Maybe go darker again with the gamma in the first one. And I'm just gonna pull this in a little bit. Now again, you and I are gonna notice this for sure because we're gonna see this before and after. We can see that I've obviously manipulated it, but the average viewer isn't gonna see the before and after, and so they're not gonna know. They're gonna think that this is just how it was shot. And I've gone in on almost every single shot in this sequence and just added a power window to draw the viewer's eye where I want it. You can see the power window is just around the boot there, just in the center, just a little vignette to darken it around the edges. This one I've got around kind of the path by adding just that one extra step, I feel like we've made a big difference on all of these shots. So here's what it looks like without and with these power windows. Like I said before, this technique can be used on any footage to shape the light, but I find it particularly helpful when I'm shooting in natural light and I don't have control over the space and the lighting to add those shapes in camera. As you can see, the power windows are an amazingly simple yet powerful tool to guide your viewer's eye where you want them to look. If you agree, give that like button a push, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.